afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis, hence the name of my channel, Lloyd Lear Consulting. Four years ago, I was asked to come up with a series of videos that were filmed inexpensively. We don't use digital cameras, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't use shotgun microphones, we uh, wear tatty shirts, we just use a phone. But we look at cars that you can buy for a budget up to £1,000 only and we very much enjoy ourselves. These are cars that might be in cosmetically bad condition, you might see oil leaks, rattly dashboards and cosmetic imperfections but uh, we go all over the country and we find these very inexpensive cars that you all seem to enjoy watching. As a member of the uh, Volvo Owners Club viewers, I was fascinated to drive different types of Volvo. And uh, here we have a different type again. This is a 2004 Volvo V40 Mark I 2 litre Classic S automatic. This is a very late example of the first generation uh, S40 and V40. When um, the S40 was replaced with the Mark II version in 2004. Of course, I own a Mark II S40 myself. I opted to change the name of this to the V50. Don't know why particularly, but there we go. You might notice this car is cosmetically quite imperfect. Um, the owner is called Robin, who is a channel viewer. He, I don't think he's ever washed it. <laughs> he's had it for 18 years, and I don't think he really cares about the cosmetic condition of it. Um, but one thing he does like, and I also like, although it could do with a little bit of a clean, is a beige leather interior with wood. Mm. I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. We've got some wood, we've got a beige dashboard, we've got all the electrics you could want, and cruise control, and air conditioning, and all sorts of things. With these really late um, V40s, they really piled on the equipment uh, before they uh, actually gave up um, making cars in the Netherlands, which uh, happened in 2004. The next generation of these were built actually um, in, um, in Belgium with the S40 and V50. They were built in some other parts of the world as well, but the principal factory was in the Netherlands, which is why the platform of this car was shared with Mitsubishi Chrysler principally, and the Space Star, and the Proton Impian as well, which uh, is a car which we'd very much like to feature on no budget reviews. But let's get in anyway. Nice, quiet Hampshire country lane here. So yes, electric seats, side impact airbags in this. Very safe car. And then there's uh, just some typical sort of Volvo design cues from the late 90s. Very similar interior in some ways, some of the switches. With the sort of S40 and V40 and the C70 also have switches like this. Let me just uh, close the door one second. So yes, we've got the automatic model here. This actually has a five-speed automatic. The earlier ones had a four-speed auto. It's got a winter mode on it as well. Um, we've got a tape player and a CD player. Very fancy. Unfortunately, it's not like the one I had in my old C70. It doesn't sort of spin the cassette round at the top for the CDs because the cassette player is this. Uh, info center as well. We like info center views. We get, you know, fun excitement from things like that. Very simple to operate the um, air conditioning, although weirdly, I don't think this car's got heated seats. I think the heated seat buttons would be here, but it hasn't got them. You'd have to go up to the SE or the Sport to get those. Um, so it's a weird combination. The S was sort of lower down the trim range. You could get a classic SE and an SE classic Sport at the end of the um, S40 and, and V40 Mark One production life in 2004. Um, I've actually got chrome ring dials as well. That's nice. Let's see if I can get me secret mission documents in there. I think I can. <laughs> yes, viewers. Done. That sort of thing makes me happy. Um, yes, we like all the sort of luxury features in here. Oh, there's the cruise control stalk, viewers. The uh, lights are 
sort of similar to again something like an, 8, an 850 or really more relevantly um the uh p1 v70 and the s70 fog lights are there no steering wheel controls annoyingly but and actually the radio is quite low down in the dash i'd expect it to be a lot higher than this but it's not too bad um at least you don't have to sort of put a touch screen or something like that you've got some storage down here and we've got storage there as well no sunroof in this one so it's quite an interesting spec actually but because it's a run out model you'd expect that we've got a little pocket on the front of the seat there as well yeah it could do with a, a good clean in here but yeah it's done 157,000 miles so you know that's not such a bad thing okay we can uh, get in the back as well can't we so yes uh, this car's had a bit of life as you can see right it's actually not that spacious in here I mean, I mean I could put my seat further forward a bit but for a car that's relatively large I suppose we're seeing here the sort of shortcomings perhaps of being on that Mitsubishi Charisma platform because those aren't the biggest cars really either you can see there we've got inflatable curtain airbags as well so all sorts of interesting things <laughs> I'm more interested though view is in the beige leather armrest mm. <laughs> all the luxury but none of the knee room I think I'll be sitting that side probably. Uh, yeah, that'll be better. Oh, we've got a door bin down there as well, along with our beige leather on the door card and the wood and chrome effect door handles and all sorts of things. Mmm, yes. Budget luxury viewers. I gather this car might be coming up for sale quite soon. Um, although I have a Volvo already, perhaps one of you want a Volvo like this? If so, let me know. There we go. Struts still work, which is good after 20 years. Got the low blind there. Actually, you can put quite a lot of stuff in here. As you can see, Robin's got stuff for doing various jobs inside there. This low blind. It's not the biggest of Volvo estates, but if you were to compare this, for example, with an E46. BMW 3 Series Touring, you'd find actually one of these is a little bit larger in the boot capacity. The Italians actually named one of these one of the most stylish estates back in the 90s, I think. And yeah, I think it is quite a stylish facelift, which this car represents, was introduced in the middle of 2000. Um, so it lasted exactly half of the car's life, which is, uh, which is good. I like the fact that this one's got the colour key um, sort of bumper insert and things like that on it. I think that looks very smart. Um, <laughs> you can see we're very in much sort of no budget with these car here with uh, one of the fog lights which needs a new cover and things like that, but that's not a problem. Anyway, let's have a look under the bonnet at the uh, lovely Volvo white block engine. Unusual white block this. It's not the five cylinder one, it's not the six cylinder one, it's a four cylinder one. And uh, as we talk about a little bit later, this engine was also used in a Renault Safran, which is <laughs> bizarre, but there we go. Um, all full of cap, very similar to something like a C70 at the time. It's had a cam belt in 2019, which is excellent. You do need to be aware of that. Sometimes these four cylinder white blocks can be quite tappity, but you can get tappet noise. This one's actually really smooth, which is fantastic considering the, uh, um, the age of it. It tends to be the lower mileage ones that have more problems with tappets than the higher mileage ones like this, of course, though. And uh, there we go, made in the Netherlands the very last Volvos to be made at that factory in Bourne, I think it is, that Ian Seabrook visited many, many years ago in a Volvo 440. Yeah, looks like quite a lot of space to work on if you needed to and things like that. Still buy parts of this, obviously it's a mixture of Volvo, Renault and Mitsubishi parts in, in some ways, um, particularly if you've got a manual which has a Renault gearbox. Right, uh, let's take her out for a drive, shall we, viewers? So when the uh, S40 and V40 came on sale in this country in 1996, the engines available were a uh, 1.8 with 115 horsepower, and then this 2 litre with 136 horsepower. 
The next year, a 1.6 became available, which had 103 horsepower. In 1998, a couple more engines became available. We had things like the uh, Mitsubishi derived 1.8 with 122 horsepower, which is a direct injection engine. And then we get some of the uh, crazy turbos, the T4, which uh, actually produced 200 horsepower. It was actually a 1.9 engine, that one. Sometimes these two litres are badged as 1.9 as well, because the capacity is actually closer to 1.9 than 2 litres. I think it's 1948cc, these two litres. Later on in 1998, we got a, another um, turbocharged engine with 158 horsepower, also a 2 litre. And then things started to change around 99. Between 99 and 2000 we had a fundamental sort of alteration in the engines available in these cars. The 1.6 was increased to 108 horsepower. The uh, 1.8 white block was, in, was increased to 122 horsepower. So very often on the um, cars built between 99 and uh, 2003, the only way you know whether you've got a Mitsubishi or Volvo engine in the S40 or V40 is either by lifting the bonnet or looking at the engine capacity of a logbook. The uh, capacity of Mitsubishi engine is 1834cc, the uh, 1.8 Volvo engine I think is um, a little bit less than that. There are also some diesels available, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons. We don't talk about diesels on this channel. What we do talk about is actually the fact that later on the turbocharged engines got uh, more interesting. So the 2 litre turbo went up from 158 to about 165 horsepower, although that engine was discontinued in 2003. Same thing with the uh, T4 that changed in I think around 2000 2001 to have a 2 litre capacity um, but it remained around 200 horsepower, I think it was 197 actually. In 2004 all of the uh, engines were discontinued that were interesting so we just left the 1.6 uh, 1.8 Volvo engine rather than the Mitsubishi one and this 2 litre. This uh, automatic model does not to 60 in around 9.7 seconds, but the 5-speed manual is a bit faster. The 5-speed manual actually is supplied by Renault, as were the engines that we can't discuss on this channel. Strangely enough, this car is actually very similar underneath to three other cars. Uh, one is the Proton Impium, or the, uh, the Wadger in some places, yes, Wadger. And that's um, not surprising, actually, you can have Mitsubishi or Renault engines in that, actually. You can have Renault engines in that, too. The Mitsubishi Space Star and um, Mitsubishi Charisma. But the Charisma has, uh, well, not much of it, but also it had that same 1.8 GDI engine. I think the uh, Space Star could be a table with that as well. One thing you have to be aware of if you're buying one of these S40 or V40s with that 1.8 GDI engine, is that it does not run on E10, and I don't think it's even not limited and compliant, which is really strange because it was touted as being one of the cleanest engines sort of ever, and yet you can't put E10 in it. And I, I don't think it's up to limited and compliant. I could be wrong, but it's sort of strange. Also, the sort of reluctant way that Volvo used it is really odd. Volvo had a, a sort of um, tie-up with um, Renault for a long time, you know, the engines and gearboxes in the um, Volvo 460 and 440 for a long time were supplied by Renault. Um, and that's why the Renault Safran ended up with actually this engine, this two litre white block um, four cylinder. And also they had a 2.5 um, white block in them with five cylinders as well in the Safran, which is odd, uh, but there we go. I think the only other car apart from the uh, V14 S40 that used the four cylinder white block was actually that Safran and that's the facelifted one. 
a very very interesting sort of car from loads of ways but just not particularly um, noteworthy to drive there's not really much to say about this driving experience that I'm having at all it, it just kind of gets down the road nicely there's, there's not really a lot to say it's not necessarily a problem it, it's just um, yes if you were looking for the last word in dynamism apart from the T4 models then one of these probably isn't for you Let's look now at uh, some Volvo V40 Mark I trim levels. When the car came out in um, 1996, the uh, trim levels were base, like V40 1.8, and then the SE and the CD. The CD was the luxury model. Later on, other trims are added, like the S, which sort of replaced the base model. Um, in some years, although not others, it's a bit confusing, but the Sport and the Sport Lux, the XI, the XS. In 2004, all trims were discontinued, along with all the petrol turbo engines, and the car was replaced with, uh, the, all, everything was replaced with the Classic S, like this one, Classic SE and Classic Sport. Along with the Netherlands, uh, these cars were also made in Malaysia, Botswana for some reason, South Africa and Thailand. Um, I always forget Volvos did have quite a presence in some other markets around the world other than just in Europe. So viewers, should you consider a Mark 1 S40 or V40 for your higher budget up to a thousand pounds? I think there are quite a few of these left in this sort of condition where someone's had the car for a really, really long time, which is a classic pattern of Volvo ownership. And actually, if you can keep on top of things like rust, you can do a cam belt, also, you don't have a car that's got noisy tappets, then naturally, I've heard these aren't too bad. It's not the most memorable car to drive, and in fact, there's there's not much I can really tell you other than that this engine's quite punchy, and the car rides and handles like a normal car. Um, it's not like, uh, you know, the next generation S40 that I have, which is just a bit more interesting to drive, really, than this. Um, and that's probably due to some of the Ford underpinnings and Volvo's engineers kind of I think a bit more freedom to tweak it to be more enjoyable. I'm sure if this was a T4, then it would be uh, it would be more fun. But uh, there we go. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching this episode of uh, No Budget Reviews. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this, and leave a comment below. And uh, we shall see you again very soon for more inexpensive motoring.